So you want to start a YouTube channel, but you don't know what camera to buy. Well, you came to the right video because I'm going to lay out every single camera option for you and for your budget. For a bonus, I'm going to give what I first got as a camera and why I still think it's the best option to get because it's cheap and it packs a punch and I still use it to this day. So let's get right into it and let's start with the cheapest option camera that you can get. The GoPro Hero 10 coming in at 250 bucks. The Hero 10 is gonna bring you a 23.6 megapixel sensor. So you, that way you always get crisp visuals, but it's also paired with advanced autofocus and improved subject tracking that GoPro has been working on since they came into business. So the other camera I'm gonna go with is the DJI Pocket 2 priced at $400. Again, offers a great resolution sensor. And if you plan on vlogging at all, the DJI Pocket 2 is good for it being on the move. So if you're opening up a channel where you're going to be vlogging and sitting down this is also a very good option keep in mind what you're using the camera for so if you want to record youtube videos like this from a desk but you're also a snowboarder and you want to get good footage the gopro hero 10 is probably the way to go now if you want to be vlogging and also sitting down recording videos then the dji pocket 2 is probably the way to go now i also have to include this even though most people probably get annoyed when they hear this but a third option and is actually probably free is your phone I'm assuming if you're watching this, there's an 80% chance that you have an iPhone. And if you have a Samsung, then you even have a higher quality camera. So don't feel like you have to buy something in order to start making YouTube videos. And I make this mistake all the time. I feel like I have to have high-end gear before I can record something. Go to Walmart, get a tripod that's like 15 bucks, put the smartphone up and record on it. I promise you, it's not the camera, it's the person recording. So just start recording today instead of waiting to get something more expensive. All it is is consistency. Now we're gonna move up to a best budget camera. This is personally where I started finance-wise a couple years ago when I got my first camera. Um, so for our budget picks, we're going to go with the Sony ZV-E10 coming in at $800. Now the ZV-E10 boasts of a 24.2 megapixel sensor and also comes with an APS-C sensor. So that means it will have some crop to it. Now, if you plan on just recording YouTube videos and the crop won't even matter because you can set up your area like I set mine up. But if you also plan on taking photos, then maybe you want a full frame sensor where the EOS R50 is going to give you that, also coming in at $800. The EOS R50 has superb image quality and it's coupled with a dual pixel autofocus that Canon always is boasting about. So it's got good low light performance if you ever want to take photos in the dark. I'm giving you the EOS R50 creator kit because sometimes it's good to just have everything in a bundle and get started. So keep in mind, if you buy just the camera body, you also have to get a lens, an SD card, God knows what else comes with it, depending on how much money you want to spend on it. Both these cameras strike a perfect balance between affordability and professional features. So that makes them awesome choices for someone looking to start a YouTube channel in 2024. Sony is usually very, very good at video. They prioritize their cameras for video. So if you plan on just simply sitting at a desk and recording talking videos like I am to you, the Sony ZV-E10 is probably going to be the way to go. But if you also want to get out in the field, and take some photography and you know snap some good photos then the r50 might be the way to go because it's got a full frame sensor and it's going to capture more in those photos we're going to continue up the ladder to the mid-range cameras and this is when i'm going to talk about the fujifilm xs10 coming in at 1300 dollars uh, the xs10 has a 26.1 megapixel sensor and exceptional image quality the fujifilm cameras are always known for the colors directly out of camera now again if you're recording in a situation like this, you know, it might not matter. But if you also want to go out in the field and get nature photos, then, well, the Fujifilm XS10 is probably going to be the way to go. Now, on the other hand, the EOS R8, which is just released a few months ago, maybe. I can't remember when. Maybe a year ago. So the EOS R8 is a brand new camera from Canon. And that has a 20.1 megapixel sensor. And it's got a full frame sensor, so this camera is going to be good for taking photos as well. The EOS R8 also has dual pixel CMOS autofocus. So again, autofocus is big when you're making YouTube videos because you got to focus on the face. I've actually had the pleasure of renting out and using for a video I made. Um, the R8 is basically just the Canon R6, which is a very expensive, powerful camera for half the price. The only thing that's missing is this image stabilization. And a lot of people complain about Canon's image stabilization anyway. So if you're looking for a camera that's basically going to give you professional features at half the price, the Canon EOS R8 is going to be the way to go. And I can attest to that. I've used it. 
and I love it. But again, the Fujifilm also has great color, so another, both of these cameras are great options in that range, all right? All right, again, we're moving up the ladder here to the upper mid range, which is $1,500 to $2,000. You got some money in the bank and you're willing to spend it. Well, I'm gonna give you the cameras to look at, all right? We got the Sony A6700 coming in at about $1,500. This is where you're really gonna start seeing some good camera quality. It has a 24.2 uh, megapixel sensor. It is an APS-C sensor, so it is cropped. But again, it all depends on what you're doing with the camera. If you're just simply making YouTube videos from a desk, doesn't really matter, right? Um, but it has excellent, excellent image quality and takes great video. Sony also has great autofocus. Always tracking your eyes is gonna keep you in focus, which is exactly what you need. Canon EOS R7 is what I'm gonna recommend for another upper mid-range camera coming in at $1,800. And this camera really takes autofocus to the next level. I mean, you it, it picks up your eyes. You don't even need to adjust anything. EOS R7 also has really good low light performance. So again, if you're taking photos out in the field at night, maybe you wanna take some photos of the stars, this camera's gonna be a good option. These cameras cater to creators seeking advanced features, making them great choices again for YouTubers with a little extra dough in their sack, whatever that means. So <laughs> um, now we're just gonna go to overall best cameras. So the top pick for performance is the Sony ZV-E1. Coming in at $2,200, uh, the ZV-E1 has a 24.2 megapixel sensor. It delivers stunning visuals, again, using Sony's autofocus technology, real-time autofocus, real-time tracking. And the other camera is the Canon EOS R6 at $2,300, a personal favorite of mine. Meanwhile, the EOS R6 has a full-frame sensor, offers unparalleled image quality, and its advanced autofocus system is competing with Sony's. It's got dual pixel CMOS autofocus too, so even upgraded from all the other cameras that I mentioned earlier, and that's gonna ensure rapid, precise focusing again, so you don't even have to worry about making the background blurry, because everybody knows a blurred background makes it look better, even though mine isn't really that blurred, so. Now that you notice that, these cameras are perfect content creators who demand the absolute best in both megapixels and autofocus technology, and they deliver a powerful package for creating top-notch YouTube content. Personally, I don't think you need cameras like that. Those are super expensive. Those are high-end professional cameras that the top-notch dogs are using, all right? Now, if you got the money, fuck it. Get it, figure them out, watch some YouTube videos about the camera, learn all about, and you know, make great YouTube video content. Now, I'm gonna tell you my personal choices and what I first got as a camera. Anyone who ever asks me what camera should I start with, I always recommend the Canon EOS M50. It's not easy to get this camera anymore, it's pretty old, and everybody loves this camera, so when they release on Amazon, they usually go pretty fast. I got the Creator Kit when I first purchased it, and it was $700, I think, and now it's got one for $400, meaning you have the lens, the camera, I think it comes with an SD card and a microphone, I believe. Then if you wanna take a step forward, get the Canon M50 Mark II, which I think their Creator Kit comes in at like $760. Yeah, $760. Now, Canon M50 does have very good autofocus, but it is a crop sensor. I went out and I got a Viltrox mount adapter, right? So I don't know if you can see that. I got this right here. And then I got a Canon full frame lens right here. And instead of giving it a 1.8 crop, which comes with that crop sensor, it brings it down to like a 1.1, I think. Basically a full frame sensor on a camera that costs not the price of a full frame sensor, right? I'm getting a little too deep. If you want to take a look at those, I'll leave those down below. Let me know what you guys think and what camera you guys started with. And remember, it's not about the gear. It's about consistency and discipline. And I appreciate you for watching this video and I'll see you next time. Uh, yeah. Sometimes I like to hey, if you're still here, feel free to watch another video that pops up here. YouTube thinks you'll really like this video, so I'd recommend watching it.